not only give back to the Lord the fruit of the blessings He gives us, we also praise Him with the fruit of our lips. Stand as you're able and we'll sing the doxology. instituted one of the two ordinances we practice as a church and that ordinance is the Lord's Supper and the Lord did this for several reasons he did this so that we would remember him he did this so that we would demonstrate his death and he did this to bind us together and that's one reason we call it communion we welcome everyone who's trusted Christ as Savior regardless of your church affiliation we have an open communion we do encourage each of us to follow the instruction of Paul in 1 Corinthians 11 to, as the uh, communion elements are passed, to meditate on the Savior and also to take the opportunity to confess any lingering sin so that we can partake in a worthy manner. Uh, with that in mind, let's bow together and please do hold the elements uh, so that we'll all partake together. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of taking communion together as a church we pray, Father, that you would prepare our hearts during this time as we meditate silently as the elements are passed, that any sin might be confessed, that our Savior might be remembered, and that we might enjoy partaking together of the bread that symbolizes your broken body and the cup that symbolizes your shed blood. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. chapter 22 verses 14 through 16 and 19 and 20. When the hour had come Jesus sat down with the twelve apostles with him and he said to them with fervent desire I desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer for I say to you I will no longer eat of that until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. I always think it's important to remind each of us once we have partaken of communion. But first of all, we do this in remembrance of Him. We have so many things to distract us, so many things to take away our focus. But my prayer is that whenever we partake of communion, it will remind us, not only today, but throughout the week, to focus on our Savior. 
It also demonstrates his broken body and shed blood. That's the picture that Paul gives us in 1 Corinthians 11, that we show the Lord's death whenever we partake. And it's also an act of communion, binding us together as a church and also with other churches and communities of God's people in other parts of the world. This time, Bruce will come and read our passage of Scripture from Ephesians. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'll tell you, it's uh, nice to see a couple of young faces back there. And uh, I just want to tell you, kids, that if you did not receive your jelly beans, you can get them as you go out. That's Scripture candy, and that's to help you to be a missionary where you can. And this morning, we, our reading comes from Ephesians 6, 18 through 24. And I want to pay particular attention to verse 21, when a man by the name of uh, Theseus uh, uh, is given some instructions. And uh, he sort of demonstrates what an elder in the church should be. So with that, let me begin with verse 18. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given to me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearfully as I should. Tysias, my dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you everything, so that you may also know how I am and what I am doing. I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are, and that you may be that he may encourage you. Peace to brothers and sisters, and love with faith from God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Here ends the reading. Anybody while traveling, make sure you introduce Jesus Christ before you get out. I don't know how to because this is a woman. And also, 
I speak one language, and she speaks some other language. So I don't know how to communicate. You know what I did? I didn't talk to her, but I looked at the window and I say to myself, oh, it's going to be raining today. You know, that lady said to me, sir, I have seen the newspaper. This evening there is going to be heavy rain. Did she talk to me? That is called a small talk. <laughs> <laughs> After some time she asked me, sir, where are you from? Because I know a little uh, a language what she is speaking, that's uh, Hindi. The Hindi is a natural language, everybody should know. So she was talking and I said, uh, I come from blah. So we both of us started to talk and the slowly passengers started to occupy the seats. You know, while we are talking, we become friends. This is called a personal talk. She, her name is Sunita. Sunita, you know that you told me it's going to be heavy rain today. If the heavy rain comes, the train falls, we may fall, we may die. Oh, everybody has to die, sir. I told her, if I die, I will go and live with my Lord forever. Ah, what are you talking? Mr. Philip, you are talking about God? Oh, there is no God, sir. Where is the God? She must be an atheist. She was a Buddhist. But she said, I never gone to my Buddha temple. I never, because I don't believe there is a God. Wow. This is, I started to introduce a religion about Jesus Christ. I told my testimony. I was a sinner like you, right? When I was in my home, we are four children at home. Four children from my parents. We are all supposed to come at 6 p.m. for a family prayer. By the time I went to the college, I thought he was a big man, you know. I came at 10 o'clock. Wow, oh, will my daddy keep quiet? He was holding a big stick and started to beat me. Before I say, why I am late, he started to beat me. I said, Dad, why are you beating me? I am giving a food. I am giving education. I am taking care of I am spending money on you. You need to listen to me. I was telling the story to Sunita. She was listening very interestingly. I said, I am going to leave. I am fed up of the house, Dad. You all the time talking about God. I am leaving. I left at 11 p.m., went to the railway station, took a train. I traveled about 10 hours, went to big city. Because God gave a gift I misused. I was a designer. I was an artist. I joined in the film industry. From 1980 to 83, four years I worked industry, they gave a lot of money. Those days there is no computers. I had to paint actors' pictures, big, big, 10 feet by 20 feet. They gave a lot of money. What did I do with the money? I did a scene. Because my dad was not there, my mom was not there. Nobody was there to watch me. So I was doing enough scene. One day I got down a bus as I was traveling to my home. Somebody looked like a, calling me, oh, young man, who's that? So I went to the big college compound. I could see what is happening. There was a youth meeting was taking place. A preacher was talking from Ecclesiastes 11, 9. It says, oh, young man, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to see, you can do everything. Well, I was thinking, wow, he's talking about me. That's what I'm doing. What he says, Whatever you have done, Mamba, you have to bring everything to the judgment. Wow. Made me scared. Am I going to give account to God? Made me scared. I accepted Jesus Christ that night. I told Sunita, I accepted Jesus Christ because I don't want to go to hell. Then I went back to my home. I asked my dad, Dad, I'm sorry, four years away from my parents. I went and asked my daddy forgiveness. I asked mommy forgiveness. 
I went to the church. I asked for forgiveness. Now, Sunita, I have a peace. I have a joy. I have a relationship. I have everything today. Wow. Is that your God? I said, yes. Jesus Christ gave me everything. Time up. I was packing, getting down. She said, sir, are you going? Yeah, my station has come. I need to get down. The lady who said there is no God, she was eager to listen about Jesus Christ. While getting down, I had a magazine called Light in Bengali. That's a one language, Eastern India. They speak a Bengali that's called a Jyoti. So I had this book. Ma'am Sunita, this book has a Bible verses talking about Jesus Christ. Pictures are there. And the John the Gospel is a, again, this is also is a book from the Bible. You read this. You will know more about Jesus Christ. I gave a telephone number of my name and I hand over to her and I got down. <clears throat> After two months, she gives me a call. Mr. Philip, do you know, remember, I'm Sunita. We travel together. You gave me a book. I finished reading the book. The book says the word of God. It says, it's talk to me. It says, Jesus Christ is alive. Wow, nobody, God is alive. Thousands of gods we have in India. But this God is alive. I want to know more about, can I have a Bible? Then I called one of my friend back over there. And he gave a Bible, she read, and she joined the church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just only talk, a small talk. And then finally, I concluded about my testimony. How I was living, how I came to know, encounter with the Lord Jesus. What I am doing, I gave that. Very carefully, in India, today, you all know, you must be hearing from the past, what is happening. See, I, particularly my organization told me, this is the relationship. You need to relate with the person. Slowly talk about a small talk. And then introduce yourself, personal talk. Then only you talk about the God. What's happening? Some of them were going and meeting people and say, do you know Jesus Christ? They introduce a Christianity. They don't want a Christianity because the gods what they have over there in India is more important than Jesus Christ. You have only one God, but we have thousands of gods. That's why our organization sends me to seven countries like Southeast, South Asia I travel. I teach every church member, every Christian. I tell them, when you go out of the church, when you leave, you are going to go to market, you are going to meet the people outside. Make sure that a person is your friend. The relationship is important. Then only the religion. Don't confuse religion. That's why we are getting into problems there. Because the outside world loves a bad act. That is their God, isn't it? Worshipping idols, that is their God. So we need to be very careful to bringing them to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We need to be careful. That's what our share word global taught me. What is the share word global? Share word global <clears throat> is born from Gideon Canada. Because today we cannot give a Bible. Bible giving become a bottleneck, particularly in India. So many countries happening, but India particularly, when you give a Bible. Not only that, but particularly I come from one state that is called province, that is called Karnataka. One lady was carrying a Bible. And she was going simply to the church and she was going. They said, where are you taking Bible? Are you going to convert somebody? Come to the police station. They taken her to the police station and false accusation given she beaten police and then put her in a prison. This is the way India is converted. They don't want the Christians to do the work properly. They wanted 
their religion, the Hindu, Hindutva they call, they wanted to come up. That's why church is suffering. I wanted to pray. Share World Global started to minister in 2016. Somehow they picked me. So I go every Sunday, preachers, and tell them, you have to go out to develop the relationship before you introduce Jesus Christ. That way, church is growing. Just one more story I tell you. <clears throat> one day, the girl, her name is Lakshmi. She was locked up because of a pandemic. Everybody, parents, child, daughter, Lakshmi was inside the house for one year. After some time, pandemic has relapsed. She could hear a song somewhere. She said, Dad, Dad, Mommy, somebody singing there. I want to go. Said, no, 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 you're not going because that is the church, a Christians, and the white scar. No, 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 you're not going. Somehow, Father, second day, Father said, Okay, let her go. So Lakshmi went. Where there was a vacation, Bible school was going on. This girl, Lakshmi, went, attended class, came back, and she brought a book called a spark. This is the book she brought. There are a lot of puzzles and the stories. So she started to work. Mother was asking, what is that? What are you doing? Oh, no, no, no. I'm working. Don't disturb me. And then the daddy said, what are you doing, Lakshmi? Daddy, why are you calling me Lakshmi? My name is not Lakshmi. My name is Ruth. Hallelujah. Because she heard the Ruth story, she changed her name. Don't call me Lakshmi anymore. My name is Ruth. She loves that story. What happened? Second day, third day, 10 days she attended. 10th day, pastor said, you have to come with the parents because of the final day. Mother was not willing to go. Father said, okay, let's go. They both went. And what the Lakshmi, Ruth has done, performed on the stage, and they were very happy. Came back, father was taking every week after week to the Sunday school. Mother never come. Father will bring the girl and he sits outside the room. He won't come inside the church. One day Pastor walked, he said, Why don't you come inside? Sir, can I come inside? So he came inside. Story to make short, he accepted Jesus Christ because of the Lakshmi. This book is changing people. So this is a one of the tools what we are using. Because we can't give up Bible. So that's why we told the people, take the book. Wherever the teacher can, keep reading. So people will be watching at 10 of them. And one person, the Holy Spirit prepares. They will ask, what is this book? Tell them, this is about Jesus Christ. And they will definitely ask. Give it to them. Before you give, make sure that number, telephone number. One day, they will definitely call you back. They will ask more. Hand over to the pastor. After that, what we say? Okay, Bible will be given to those who ask. Don't give a Bible. When we give a random today, it's danger. If the person asks, give it to them. There's no problem. And then the final thing, backside, when you see, there is a mobile app behind the book, newlife.bible. That is an app through mobile also. Don't have carry Bible. When you carry, you have number one option here. You have a Bible. NLT Bible has given all 66 books in this. And also, questions raised by the non-Christians, you have uh, answers. And the third option, any Bible, audio Bible, around the world. Type the language, you can hear. All the three options were given. Use this, you can go ahead and do the ministry and bring up people to the Lord. Just one more small story I'll conclude from the Bible. You know Jesus Christ was walking on the water Peter said, I want to walk. Wow. Jesus said, okay, get up. You can walk. He started to walk on the ocean. As you are looking at Jesus, he was good. After that, as you look at the wind, he started to sink inside. What did Jesus did? Peter said, save me, Lord. And what Jesus did here, look at that very carefully. Matthew chapter 14, 31 says, Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? What did you do first? He grabbed him. 
Can you see that? He grabbed Peter, then only given a message. If the, Jesus started to message to him, he would have gone. Peter would have gone. We need to see the needs of people. They want a love because people don't get a love. They want a joy. They want a happiness. They want that is the first to give it. And then they will listen to you, the word of God, and then the people will come to know the Lord. <clears throat> Small incident I tell again. I'll close. I was traveling in a bus one day. The lady was standing with the child, crowded bus. I told that lady, come, sit down. I got up and I gave her a seat. She said, thank you. You know what happened? They itself, I developed the relationship. She said, thank you. Then, it's easy for me to give a book. Is it easy to give a Bible, give a gospel? While she's standing, suffering, there are people trying to evangelize. Other bus passengers will beat him. So that's what is happening. So pray that everybody follows the word of God and do according to the steps what I give. <clears throat> Outside, I left the app cards and the uh, light spark. You can take it use it for your ministry. One more small announcement is you wanted to support towards the books. We only print the books towards that book. You can take it, monthly you can support, otherwise one time you can give. Few commitment cards are given there, you can pick up. Thank you very much. God be with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you my brother and I would encourage you all uh, to pray for Philip's ministry. Ask God to just uh, uh, abundantly bless him as he courageously shares the gospel in India. And again, uh, remember the lesson he gave us from the life of Peter. Remember what he said? He didn't preach Peter a sermon before he reached out and grabbed him. And when we have an opportunity to do something kind to help people, it opens the door for us to share the message. I hope you didn't miss that message. It was very, very timely. And uh, take some of that material that's at the back. God lays it on your heart uh, to get involved in that ministry. But thank you, my brother, for sharing with us today. Now take your Bibles and turn very briefly to Ephesians chapter 6. We've come to the end of our journey through Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. In chapters 1 through 3, we saw our wealth in Christ. We've been chosen in Him, given all spiritual blessings. Chapter 2, saved by grace through faith. Chapter 3, Jews and Gentiles united in one body. We get to chapter 4, he says we're to walk worthy. And a number of ways we're to walk. He talks about walking differently in 4.17, walking in love in 5.1, walking in the light in 5.18, walking uh, 8, rather, 5. 15, to walk carefully or circumspectly, and in 518, to be filled with or walk in the Spirit. That's to impact our marriages, that's to impact our parenting, that's to impact our work life. And then he winds up in verse 18 of uh, chapter 6 by saying, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Did you count the alls in that verse? There were four of them. Yeah. We're to pray always. First thing he tells us. Jesus in Luke 18, 1 said we're to always pray and never give up. You have a situation in your life that's desperate, you don't know where to turn, pray. You want to hear a powerful program on prayer, uh, tune in to theworshipchannel.org tonight at 9 o'clock. Last night, Dr. Gene Getz and I took prayer requests from people all over the country who were in desperate straits, some of them physical, some of them in other ways, and we prayed for those people, and you will be inspired if you listen uh, to that ministry of prayer. We're told to persist in prayer. Uh, Matthew 7, 17, keep on asking, keep on seeking, Keep on knocking. Sometimes we pray and we say, well, God hasn't answered my prayer, so I might as well give up. 
That's the opposite of what Jesus told us. He said, always pray and never give up. It's always too soon to quit. We're to pray always. We're to pray all kinds of prayer. Uh, there's to be praise and worship toward our God. Uh, one of the things Gene Getz outlined last night was Nehemiah's prayer. Nehemiah chapter 1. God, the great and awesome God. Second thing, God who kept his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Third thing, he confessed his sins and the sins of his people. Sometimes prayers don't get answered because we haven't confessed. He sa it says in Psalm 55, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And also I'm to intercede for other people as well as for my own needs. God answers prayer. All kinds of prayer. And he says pray in the Spirit. The biblical formula is I pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, but in the power of the Spirit of God. He is the one who empowers us when we pray. We talked about temptation this morning in the Sunday school class, and the Spirit of God was leading Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. And there Jesus demonstrated dependence on the Spirit and the use of what we saw last week, the sword of the Spirit. Do you remember what the sword of the Spirit is? Yeah. The Word of God. The Word of God. Thank you. What is the sword of the Spirit? Let me hear it, church. Word of God. Thank you. The Word of God. And we pray with our eyes wide open. He says we're to pray alertly, uh, uh, awake, watchful. You remember what happened to Peter and James and John when Jesus had them to pray with him in the Garden of Gethsemane? They fell asleep. And three times they fell asleep. I want to ask you this morning if you've ever fallen asleep praying. I don't want to tempt anybody to lie in church today. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we fall asleep. He says, stay awake. Pray alertly. Be aware. Pray with your eyes wide open. It's interesting in Nehemiah chapter 4, they were rebuilding the wall. He said they set a watch and they made their prayers. They were watching and praying. It's what Jesus told the disciples in Mark 14. Watch and pray that you not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And then there's the personal element of prayer, as Paul tells us here. Pray for all believers, all the saints, verse 18. And then he makes it personal for himself. And we have the opportunity to pray for believers in India. Our brother Philip has shared with us there wonderful story about the lady who came to Christ. We can pray for her. <clears throat> we can pray for those involved with Saji Lucas and Mission India. And through the worship channel, uh, my radio ministry on the internet is touching 192 countries. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week with the gospel. And you folks are a part of that ministry. That's a ministry that we as a church support. And we need to pray for that ministry. And pray uh, the listenership the last two months of the summer has been the biggest it has ever been in the eight years that we've been doing this ministry. God is at work. And we need to pray about this ministry. Pray for those believers, many of them in places like China and in Iran and other places the church is underground, but the church is thriving and growing. And we need to pray for those believers. And notice what Paul asked a prayer for him personally, very specifically, utterance given. He doesn't pray, get me out of, out of prison, Lord, because he's in prison when he writes this letter. He prays, God, give me utterance, give me boldness, give me clarity in preaching the gospel. Meditate on that today. He says, give me the opportunity to share the gospel. You know, it's interesting. I was on a Zoom call on Thursday evening. I was talking with a young couple who were interested in getting married. And one of the things I always talk to young couples who are interested in my marrying them is, do you know the Lord as Savior? Are you believers? And uh, they both uh, told me, yeah, we're believers. But as we talked further, the young man began to realize he hadn't really trusted Christ. Before the conversation was over, the young man who was a military guy out in Nevada prayed to receive Christ as his personal Savior. See, we have opportunities to share the gospel with people. And I believe God wants us to take advantage of those utterance. That's what Paul prayed for. The opportunity to share the gospel. 
and boldness, not to be afraid, and then clarity in explaining the mystery. He mentioned that four or five times in the book of Ephesians. And then he sent Tychicus, and I'm so glad that Bruce mentioned this dear man uh, who was obviously one of the leaders in the church. And Paul says he's a beloved brother. He's a faithful servant, a minister of the Lord. And he's going to come and tell you what's going on in my ministry. I want you to know our affairs. We need that kind of communication. But he's also coming to encourage your hearts. He's not just there with information. He's there with encouragement. Uh, it was Truett Cathy, the founder of Chick-fil-A, who once said, you can tell if a person needs encouragement, just put a mirror underneath their mouth and nose and test and see if they're breathing. If they're breathing, they need encouragement. And I guarantee you people do today. <clears throat> and then Paul's final benediction. Some of you thought I'd never get through this in time. But notice four words. Peace, verse 23. Love, verse 23. Faith, verse 23. And verse 24, he winds it up with grace. Think about it. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ when we trust in Him. We not only have that peace, we have love. Because God loves us, we can love one another. And we have faith. We can depend on God. We can trust Him. And finally, it's all because of His grace, the absolute opposite of what we deserve. If you haven't trusted Him, the message today is settle that issue now. The Bible says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The penalty for sin is death. But God's Son, Jesus, paid the penalty when He died on the cross. He rose again from the dead to guarantee that if you place your trust in Him, you will have everlasting life. Bow together with me. Father, if there's one person in the sound of my voice, either here or on our Facebook feed or website, who hasn't trusted you, may they trust you as Savior today. Thank you for this journey through Ephesians that we've taken as a church family. And Father, I pray that you would just drive this message home to us. May we be people of prayer, people of opportunity for witness, and people who have a passion for the world to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray this for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand together. Our invitation hymn is number 435. What a friend we have in Jesus. The first and third stanzas.
peace of Christ be with you. And with you also.